Well, happy Monday, Evangel Church. I hope that your week has begun well. I want to share a devotion with you that, again, looks back at our focus verse from yesterday. Uh, our primary focus was on Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, where it says, Blessed are uh, the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so this is by an author, J.C. Philpott, through a collection called Through Baca's Veil. And uh, again, it references Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Spiritual poverty is a miserable feeling of soul emptiness before God. An inward sinking sensation that there is nothing in our hearts spiritually good, nothing which can deliver us from the justly merited wrath of God or save us from the lowest hell. And intimately blended with the poignant feelings of guilt and condemnation, there is a spiritual consciousness that there is such a thing enjoyed by the elect as the spirit of adoption, that there are such sweet realities as divine manifestations, that the blood of Jesus Christ is sprinkled by the Holy Ghost upon the, the consciences of the redeemed to cleanse them from all guilt and filth. And thus, by comparing our own wants with their blessings and having an inward light wherein the truth of God's word is seen and an inward life whereby it is felt, a soul waiting in the depths of spiritual poverty is brought to feel that it must be the manifestation of the light of God's countenance, which alone can deliver. That it must be the testimony of God spoken by his own lips to the heart that alone can save. And that the want of this is the want of everything that can manifest it to be a vessel of mercy here, and fit it for, as well as carry it into, eternal glory and bliss hereafter. To be poor, then, is to have this wretched emptiness of spirit, this nakedness and destitution of soul before God. Nor is it perhaps ever more deeply felt than in the lonely watches of the night, when no eye can see nor ear hear but the eye and ear of Jehovah, in these solemn moments of deep recollection, when the stillness and darkness around us are but the counterpart of the stillness and darkness of the soul, he that is spiritually poor often feels how empty he is of everything heavenly and divine, a sinking wretch without a grain of godliness. And without drawing too rigid a line of exclusion, we may unhesitatingly say that he who has never thus known what it is to to groan before the Lord with breakings forth of heart as a needy, naked wretch. He that has never felt his miserable destitution and emptiness before the eyes of a heart-searching God has not yet experienced what it is to be spiritually poor. And I would add on to that if one has not come to the point of recognizing spiritual poverty, that self has nothing to offer before a holy God, one has probably not come before the Lord for salvation because it begins here. This is the foundation of life. The foundation of life is spiritual destitute, uh, is, is spiritual bankruptcy, is spiritual poverty. We have nothing to offer. Self brings nothing to the table. But, but the grace of God, because God has so loved us that he sent his son, because God so overwhelmingly graced us with the gift of salvation, when we recognize our poverty and then his provision, it melts our soul. And we respond to that love. We love him because he first loved us, but we have to see it in the light of our own spiritual poverty. Well, I pray that this is the reality of your life, that you have come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and that you live in a reality that is his provision that carries you on. Well, I pray you have a blessed week. We look forward to seeing you again this next week. And I pray for you, you pray for me. God bless you, love you, see you soon.